second. Now, obviously, I'm not really dressed in the way that most people are dressed when they think of barbecue. Right? You can kind of think of, I don't know, shorts, t-shirts, speedos maybe, I don't know. Uh, but definitely not wrapped up with uh, a scarf. But for as long as I can remember, the last, I don't know, 35 years or something, my dad has cooked all the way throughout the year. Christmas dinner on the barbecue, barbecues in the winter. And this is so nostalgic for me to share this with you now. So this is a family recipe that my dad has cooked for years. And I don't know why I never really asked him for it. And one summer I said, oh, you know those burgers it used to make? Any chance I could have the recipe? So I'm gonna share it with you now. Um, I like to cook a lot with venison because it's a really lean, low fat meat and it's not as expensive as people think. So in here, I've got um, just shy of 300 grams of venison. It's quite a lot of salt and pepper, seasoned more than you think you would need to. There is half an onion very coarsely grated in there as well. There is a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce kicking around in there as well, and two cloves of garlic that I've chopped up and mushed up in there as well. Now, from the garden, I've also got here some rosemary and some thyme as well, just to provide a nice little bit of herby seasoning in there as well, because I just love herbs. There's a really lovely thing about being outdoors and being a little bit more connected to the food that you're cooking. Uh, something really exciting. You know, it's the joy of having this outdoor kitchen built is that actually you get to be outdoors. You've got a bit more of the amenities here and you want to spend a bit more time cooking outdoors. I suppose it's a little bit like Saturday Kitchen, but on Monday and outdoors and with only me. So in many ways, it's nothing like Saturday Kitchen. Um, <laughs> right, so give that a good mix up. Now I have to say, I don't know whether I'm supposed to tell you this or not, but I actually find the better way to do it is just to get your hands in. So, and we go. I imagine this is how most people get into puppetry. <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. Uh, and the nice thing about this is you can really, really squeeze it up. Um, now, because venison is a leaner mint, and there's less fat in there, so you'll find that the mixture actually is quite wet, uh, with beef particularly, even lean beef, you've got an awful lot more fat in there, so it sticks together a little more. Now, that's okay. Um, the simple way around that is that in a second, we're gonna shape them into burgers, and then we're going to pop them into the fridge for a little bit just to set so they're not quite as wet um, and just keep an eye on them. Um, I find that there's a really nice way of being able to cook on a barbecue not straight on the grill. I'll show you that in a second, which keeps the burgers uh, nice and together. So really literally squeeze it through your fingers to give it a good mix up. And that there is that burger mix done. And that's gonna make two good sized burgers. You probably could split that up and get three or even four small burgers, but frankly, I eat like a horse, so that's a good sized burger for me. So I'm gonna share with you now something super top secret. I never thought I'd ever get the opportunity to do this, uh, but my dad has given me permission to share with you his secret family recipe, barbecue sauce recipe. It is, it is epic, you're gonna love it. It's super, super simple. You need a bowl to mix it all in. Uh, I've got here two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I'm gonna use this spoon that's already got a bit of ketchup on it <clears throat> to spoon that in there. So two tablespoons of veg oil. Got a little bit of brown sugar here uh, as well. Let me just move that out of the way. And the brown sugar is, I think, three tablespoons of, uh, of brown sugar. So that's gonna go in there as well, just nice soft brown sugar. There's a whole onion, which has been chopped up really, really finely. Uh, tend to go for a small onion rather than a big one. This is a little bigger than normally I would like. Uh, and you can, by all means, chop it up a little bit finer than that if you want to. I kind of like the bit of a crunch with it, but I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Need some tomato ketchup, 
I find that getting a tomato ketchup that's a little bit artisan, a little bit left field, a little bit independent, makes a big difference here rather than the, you know, the sort of generic stuff you get from a supermarket. Um, that goes in there as well, and you're putting in there four tablespoons of tomato ketchup. The cheaper stuff just tends to be very sugary, sort of overly sweet, maybe sometimes a little bit vinegary as well, uh, whereas the sort of more independent stuff is just a bit nicer. Now, a couple of random things. This here is, yeah, so, uh, no, this one's Worcestershire sauce. They look so similar. This one's Worcestershire sauce, and you're gonna pour in there two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Liam Perrins, and this one here is soy, and again, two teaspoon, uh, two tablespoons of, uh, of soy in there as well. So that's the mixture. Looks pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And give that a really, really, really <coughs> good mix together. And if you want to, you can pass this through a, uh, a sieve, squash some of those onion pieces down if you want. I don't mind a chunky barbecue sauce like this because by the time it's in a burger with the lettuce and the bun and the gherkins and the cheese and it's all melting, it's quite nice to have a little bit of extra crunch. Uh, and I quite like a fresh raw onion in my burger as well. If you don't like raw onion, then definitely you know mush it up a little bit more, maybe even pulp it, but it is quite important for the flavour. So that goes in there. And that combination you get this incredible deep earthiness, I guess, from the soy and the Worcestershire. A little bit of spice, sweetness. <laughs> That's so good. Thanks, Dad. So I put a little bit more charcoal on this to bring the temperature back up. And this is the secret for burgers when they're homemade, because homemade burgers tend to be just that little bit more fragile. This is like a, a fireproof plasticky thing. I don't even know what it is, but uh, it's very, very tight knit, as you can see. It's like a, almost like a fly screen, I suppose. But you can chuck it on the barbecue, literally just like that. You don't need to treat it, don't need to do anything, and they last for ages. I'm a bit anti-plastic, generally, but this thing is great. It's made of some incredible material that will withstand high temperatures, which means that anything that's slightly fragile, like homemade burgers, you can place straight on top, and you don't have to worry about it breaking and going through the grill. So I'm just gonna slide these straight in here. Definitely when you do them yourself, don't put them in a round bowl, idiot, because <laughs> they're much more difficult to get out. There we go. Um, top tip from my dad, don't know whether this is, uh, you know, super new or relevant or whatever, is to, when you make them, depress a little hole in the center of the burger. Um, you just literally just push your finger in it like that. And that helps uh, retain all of the fat and flavor inside the burger so they don't run off on the outside, uh, which I think is a really lovely little, uh, lovely little tip. So while these are cooking, I've just popped the buns at the very, very far edge of the barbecue just to gently warm them because when we flip these over, I'm gonna pop some cheese on, let that cheese kind of slowly melt, and you can start to build the burger buns while the burger patties themselves are just finishing off. So when they come off the barbecue, like that, while these burgers are still finishing themselves off, I'm gonna pop some cheese on these two so that they can melt. And they're ready to come off. So listen, I know it's mid-October, but if it was raining, if it was snowing, if it was freezing cold, you've got this gorgeous fire to keep you warm. And it's outdoors. There's just something wonderful about cooking all year round. So don't let the weather put you off. Get outside, get out a fire lit, and enjoy some delicious homemade food.